28. Woohoo! So today we're going to be learning about um, tonicization, modulation, applied dominant chords, um, and other various forms of modulation and what you can do. Now, if you don't know your, uh, uh, what are they called, the, the key, the scale degrees, there we go. <laughs> Just popped out of my head there. If you don't know the scale degrees, if you don't are, aren't familiar with that, that was back I think on lesson 15 or something like that. If you aren't familiar with those, go back and review that because otherwise you're probably going to be pretty lost. All right. So uh, yeah. So this is a bit more theory for those of those those of you that wanted the extra little tips on modulation and whatnot. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to teach you is. An applied dominant chord. Okay, so an applied Sorry, dominant right. chord is somewhat like this. Say you're in the key of C, okay? And you want to modulate to G, which is a pretty close key. Now you want to do it in a way that um, makes you feel like you're in G before you are in G. Now there's something that's really commonly used. An applied dominant chord basically makes you feel like you're in the next uh, you're, you're in the next chord. Now how it works is, um, you know what a dominant chord is, right? It's the five of, like, uh, if you're in C, so here's C, and then you go to a dominant chord, and then back to the tonic, right? Now what if we wanted to make the dominant sound like the tonic? How would we do that? We would use a, an applied dominant, okay? So, um, how we do this is we label it so it's one for the tonic and then five and then this little slash means five of five. So what that's saying is it's the fifth note, so the dominant of the fifth note. So what's the dominant of the dominant? <laughs> so uh, if you're in C you go up to G and the dominant of D S G is D. So the dominant that we're going to be using is the D chord, or whatever the dominant would be in G. So the dominant would be this. Okay, going to the G. So this is a very simple thing, and when it's something short-lived like this, it's actually called a tonicization. That's the technical term. It can also be called a, modulate, a modulation, but typically a modulation is something longer. This is only, you know, two chords. It's a very short period of time, so that's usually referred to as a tonicization. But technically it can also be a modulation because you are modulating. Okay, so I'm gonna play this for you. So tell me what you think here. So we are at the one chord with the C. Okay? So let's do that. flowed from this to this to this, that's because this, this is actually a perfect cadence here. That's 5 to 1 and this is 5 to 1. So that's what an applied dominant function chord does. And you could continue this if you wanted to, and you could write, make this the one, the 5 chord of the next chord, which could be, you could write in um, this and put in, you could put F, A, C here. Now the dominant chord of this uh, of F is the of F is C. So what you could do is you could go. So that's my one chord. I'm starting. I'm going from left to right, by the way. Okay. And I'm using C as the bottom note here. Now it isn't. You're just filling in chords. Now the next one goes to the applied dominant. So it 
can't, it's not all to do with um, what notes you pick, it's also where they're placed. Because if you move everything down, um, it's not going to sound finished. There's different rules that apply to harmony that you want to do to make it sound right. <laughs> so if notice how all those notes at the end went down, I was like, uh, it doesn't feel finished. But if I change them around, even though I'm using the same notes, like the same letter name notes, but in different places, it makes a totally different feel. So I'm going to get into that in another video. Uh, basically, it's called The Basics of Harmony. So I'll teach you a little bit about voice leading. OK, anyway, so there's the applied dominant. OK, so that the next little trick I'm going to show you is called a pivot chord. Now, before I showed you an applied dominant, now, uh, the applied dominant was sort of like a shock. It's sort of like taking someone that was just on a hot tub and throwing them into a, a cool pool and just, ah! It's a real shock. It's uh, going right into another key from one chord to the next without giving your ear a chance to sort of adjust to it. So that's the applied dominant. Now here's a smoother transition, kind of the sneakier way to do it. And after this, I'm going to show you an even sneakier way. Uh, sort of using an applied dominant function, but not. Okay, but anyway, so this one's called the pivot chord. Now, how this works, for those of you who are wondering, I've taken out all the little circles because it was going to get too crowded, and I've just put the note names for the chords. So, we're going to start with C, because this is all, I'm not going to get it too ridiculously crazy or anything. So, we're just keeping it simple right here. So, C, we're going to go to a one chord, okay, to start off with. Then, let's just go to a six chord, nice minor sound kind of get things rolling off. Then it goes to a three, which is a nice little sound there. And then we're going to go up to the four chord. Now, this is where things get interesting. So I'm going to use the four chord as my pivot chord because I want it to get to F major. Now, what a pivot chord is, is a chord that exists in two keys with different names. Now, an F chord, you know, F, A, C, E, that could be a one chord in F or it could be a four chord in C. So that is the pivot chord. It's something that is the same, uh, it's built the same way in two different keys. So this is what I'm doing. My pivot chord, I'm playing this. Now the interesting thing is, I have in my mind, I'm changing, once I hit this F chord, now I'm in F. But, guess what? Your ear doesn't actually know that you're in a different key until you hear another key that throws you off which would be the B flat. So, now I'm in F with one. Now I'm gonna go to five, which is C, okay? Now what I do is I go from a five to a five seven. Now I've just drawn a seven here because usually you just, if you're going from a five to a five seven, you usually don't bother putting in. I guess I could too here. If it has. So I'm going from a five to a five seven. Why? Because I wanna show you also, again, that your ear still doesn't hear the difference when you're here. It still sounds like you're in C major. Because all your ear can tell is that you've gone from 1 to 6 to 3 to 4 to 1. And now here, when you do the 5-7, you've introduced a B-flat. And B-flat doesn't exist in C major. So all of, a, you said, all of a sudden your ear is like, wait a minute, what's going on here? What's happening? So this is where it gets fun. Then when we... Uh, then it'll pull you back to what the new tonal center in your brain is going to be, which is, well, what your ear, which is the F, because the B flat gives you the impression that it's an F now. And so it's a lot of, <laughs> it's so funny because it's like the subconscious or whatever. You don't hear it, but you'll hear it in a second. I'll show you it. Then I'm just explaining beforehand so you know what you're supposed to listen to. Okay, so now the one, when I go back to the one in F major, it's simultaneously at the same time, it's the four chord in C major. So at this time I'm using this as a pivot chord, excuse me, to go back again to C major because I want to return back to the original key I've written the piece on, or this little melody, I guess you could say. So we've got the one pivot chord, one four here, and now the four is going to go to the five, which is going to pull me back to the one. Okay? Now notice here, where is the B flat again? So once I hit the five chord, the B flat goes to a B natural. And what's that gonna tell my ear? That we're back in C major again. So technically we're in F major here, but our ear still thinks we're in C major. 
then we realize that we're in F major here, that's what our ear's hearing, but then by the time we get to here, then we realize, even though we're back in F major here, we're in C major here, but our ear doesn't hear it until here. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? So, yeah, it's all to do with the, the notes that don't belong to the scale. Anyway, I should stop talking and just play this. So I'm just going to have to look back. So I'm just going left to right, and I'll go nice and slow. So first I'm going to play the C. So. So this time I'll play it a little bit faster, and you guys can hear, like, the transitions I'm making. So... So you can use them in anything where it's similar to another one. So you could use an A, like, you know, if you wanted to pivot to A minor or whatever other chord you want to do, be my guest. So there you go. All That's right. a pivot And chord. here's the last modulation I'm going to do. This is called the 2-7 modulation, or I'm just writing 2-7 because it's just going to be a 7th chord. It doesn't mean it's going to be in the 7 inversion. It could be in whatever inversion that makes the most sense at the time. Now, I'm assuming that you know a bit about music, so, yeah. <laughs> okay, if this is all gibberish to you and you don't understand it, um, go back and do some studying into harmony and uh, Roman numeral writing for chord writing and stuff like that. Anyway, okay, so what this looks like here is the 2-7 mod modulation is sort of an applied dominant of um, an applied dominant, in a way. So the 2, 7 leads you to the 5, okay, and then the 5 leads you to the 1. So what the 2, 7 does, it's an applied dominant function, sort of, but it jumps, but at the same time, it strongly, strongly, strongly establishes your next new tonal center. So you can go to far off weird keys very easily, because normally uh, in this kind of writing, you want to stay within the confines of your circle of fifth. So like if you're in C, you want to stay within G and F. Whoops. F of three things doesn't work. So you want to usually stay within this area and then they're, um, they're whatever, they're, these are the keys that you want to be around them. So these three, those are the closely related keys if C is your key that you're in or A. Okay? And then jumping off into D major would be a more uh, exotic key, and that would be take some more work to get to those keys. So that's what the 2 7 is for. It's to get you to those new keys easier with a, a nice sound to it. So what I've done here is so I have a 1, so it's C, and then I have a, this is called, a, it's a 4, but it's it just going up. Basically, the F and the A go, go from the E and the G. So they just go. 
uh, C E G to C F A. So it's just going up with the two, the three and the five. Now uh, that's the four six four. That's what it's called. So four and then a six four inversion. Then we've got uh, a two four three of two. So it's actually this is complete now from here to here. This is just of what this would be in D major. Okay. So think of this as a D major. This this two four isn't what it would be in C. Okay. It's not. So this is applying in D major. Now what this is doing is it's trying to pull, establish a new key and pull you to the five seven, which in turn is going to pull you to the to the one. So it's sort of like dual pointing to this D and saying, hey, look at me. D is the new key. Now, this D major is actually the applied dominant function of the G, uh, the, the G major, or the 5 chord of C. So what I'm doing is I'm pointing this to this, which is pointing to this, and then this points to, because this is the 5 of this one. So this is a perfect cadence, and then from here to here is a perfect cadence. So each one of these is doing a chain of events that's pointing to the next chord. <laughs> cool, huh? So let's play this and see how it sounds. <sighs> oh no! Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, anyway, just had a little fun there. So there's the C chord. Now we're gonna go to the four six four. Okay, now we go to the two four three of the two, which is this. Seven of the two chord, which is D. So it goes D and then and then this is the next one. Cool, huh? So it goes. That's this one to this one to this one. So once we're here, then we go to this chord. this uh, whole formula there. I'm actually pretty proud of that. I didn't write that, I didn't come through that out of a book, I just sat there and kind of made it up. Just specifically for this, I didn't have this in mind at all. <laughs> anyway, so that's how it works. So you can basically use this to leap to new keys. All you have to do is think of what key do I want to go to, then what's the 5 7 of that key, and what's the 2 7 of that key. So you need to think in terms of the new key. And then you use those two to line up to that key, and I'll pull you in there. And then you can stay in that key for a while as your modulation. So you could write everything in D for a while, and then go back to C later. Okay? So yeah. Anyway, that's that. That's uh, basic modulation using uh, applied dominance, pivot chords, and the 2-7 modulation. Okay, take care, guys.